So hi, welcome to the podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with... I'm Walker. I'm Ryan. We're Harbor. And we have some, some questions to say about their new album, To Chase My Dreams or To Just Lie Down. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to it so far? Thank you. Thank you. It's been great so far. Yeah. Again, a lot of good feedback. A lot of crazy uh, numbers. Every time we like look back at our like Spotify backend, like what was like the first week? It was like 2 million? Yes. Something like that. That's so crazy. I was like, what the... <laughs> do i have to censor myself real quick no, no, I, no you're, you're, good. Good. you're no. good let it fly yeah. All right. um, <laughs> that, that's fucking awesome the album rips um i actually okay. found out about you guys because i am on america part two's management team and oh, they no. have, of course had nothing but nice things to say about you guys so i'm glad that's we're finally point, here chatting yeah, we, we love them with our entire hearts yeah. for sure oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah album was incredible i just want to say it just felt so nostalgic i don't know i i love the sound of it i loved everything about it well done thank you thank, thank you. you so much yeah <laughs> it's definitely our favorite favorite stuff we've done thus far good i, I always yeah. love to hear that oh yeah uh so is there any meaning behind the album title or cover art um the title a little bit i mean it's just <laughs> it's kind of the whole thing was written during COVID when there was, you know, everything was kind of up in the air and we didn't even know if we were ever going to get back to, you know, doing what we do, touring, playing shows, that kind of stuff. So uh, just, it was, the title is basically just about all the uncertainty that comes with that. And uh, no, the, the album cover, actually, there's a, a local artist in Cincinnati that I knew and followed and uh, she just posted that painting and I liked it and thought it would be perfect for the album cover. Yeah. Well, I you know, you know. Use it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for this album? Um, it varied a little bit from song to song, but just because, mm -hmm. I mean, it was written over the course of two years. Yeah. But a lot of it was written just uh, by myself in my room when – you know can't go anywhere or do anything yeah. <laughs> so and then excuse me and we we'd get together and uh kind of develop develop the ideas as we collectively as a group it was funny like we like i think like two years ago when we started working on new music all together it was like we had we probably ended up with like a collection of like 15 16 songs and we were like well can't put out that long record right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was, we we kind of had to like pick and choose what was like what was gonna make the first record, what was gonna make you know what was gonna be pushed back and maybe pushed for a later release. And I thought that was interesting because there were ones that I think right up right from the beginning we were like, oh yeah, these are coming out yeah soon. And then more songs came out, and then it was kind of like, nah, maybe those don't need to come out yeah right now. Yeah. Like there's a couple I'm thinking in particular that we even played live like right when we first jumped back in to like playing shows again and then we just started to put the songs out yeah. and we were like nah. well let's just put out these other ones and put that one out later and it'll be cooler later. yeah you know well some of them are a little more like experimental mm -hmm. just we were just playing around with some stuff when when we which we think is cool but after so long between records we wanted to give people more of it you know a harbor record mm -hmm. something yeah. that sounds a little more like what they're used to yeah and before instead of just coming back after covid and after all, all these years and just putting out some weird shit <laughs> yeah that's how you now that's how you alienate everybody that listens to you <laughs> yeah exactly. like what are these guys doing yeah. i thought they were good <laughs> <laughs> so what song off this album took longest to write and which one is each of your own personal favorite everything's fine take them like a while to come together no. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> worth a uh, shot. Maybe in a minute. Honestly, maybe Bahamas, because yeah, we had a different bridge, and then that we ended up changing that after the we thought the song was done, and then we we completely changed the bridge. I, mean, I, forgot, I forgot about that. Yeah, it's been so long since I've like, read some of these, and I'm like, what? Yeah. Which one almost did take a long time. That one probably took the longest. Although, uh, I can't stand it started the idea like years ago and then just never came back to it so technically mm -hmm. from start to finish yeah but once we came back and sat down at it it came together really really fast and that's my favorite track 
on the record. I can't stand it. Probably. I think, I think mine's probably sleepy head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right. Sounds good. Um, yeah. So how did the track list for the album come about? Did you guys write the opener, be the opener, close a bit closer? Did you shuffle around and see what fits? What was that process like? I thought there, there was like, I think we had a lot of different drafts of like the, how, how it was going to be laid out. And the closer actually was I think that was originally written as an opener. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we just kind of, and the ember like one time we were out doing something, probably drinking somewhere out. <laughs> and he was like, I kind of think it should be a closer. And like a couple of us like were like, ah, I don't know. I don't know about that being a closer. And, but then like once I think we all kind of stuttered and on a little bit, I was definitely like, I like it. Cause it's kind of like this quick little, like, I don't know, just kind of a little sign off at the end with some weird shit. And it's still probably one of the weirder ones of the track. And like we were saying with some of the more experimental stuff, we hopefully plan to put out at some point later, it'll kind of, opens up that doorway a little more for that yeah but plus yeah. that song is uh supposed to go into another song mm-hmm. so yeah i do like sleepyhead being first on the record though right is it bahamas <laughs> i don't know i think it's sleepy <laughs> it's sleepy yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't know <laughs> We're asking, changing, you, we're asking you. We're asking you about the track list, but you're asking us what what song is first on the album. So really, exactly. do, we all, do, do any of us know well, what is the track list? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so, would you be able to tell us where your headspace is at while you're creating this record? I know it was a long time ago, so <laughs> kind of all over the place. Yeah. That's, that's, I guess, that's kind of where the the title comes from. Just like you know. It's still in in the the headspace of like enjoying doing this and enjoying making the music, even though you're not sure if anything's ever going to end up coming of it at the time, or if you're ever going to get to go play it out again or anything like that. So it's um, definitely very bizarre because it's yeah. like we're writing all this music, and I generally I know a lot a lot of people when they write music, it's a different like experience in their head with wh- where the, how they imagine it, where they imagine it, what kind of like setting it's like being put in and i'm always thinking about it like playing the live show you know you write a song it's like all right how's this gonna how's this gonna go down live you know how are we gonna do this we recreate it and with like covid and everything it was really weird to to, like have all these songs and be like well maybe we don't have to play them (laughs) we won't fucking play these songs like so that was i thought that was interesting but i don't know it's 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 i think that kind of probably shifted a little bit of this this like the frame around writing a song for a live stage rather than just writing a song to write a song. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I agree. And how did you guys kind of ma- is k- stay motivated like during this, during all that downtime and like this uncertainty? Didn't really. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fair. I mean, we were just talking about this last night that like it, it's, it's interesting how like when you were like really, really into something and really passionate about something you it sometimes doesn't feel like you have a choice you know almost like it's like oh um, and in a good way but kind of a weird way you're almost like a prisoner to it or like even though there's no like end goal like oh we might not be able to play ever again i feel like it was kind of just like what are we gonna well, do stop yeah. making music yeah exactly. you know yeah. Like, can't do that yeah. <laughs> it's not even an option yeah and so it's kind of like i think the motivation and headspace is probably weird and like the way that it's like we might just be doing this for the for the fuck of it, yeah. <laughs> you know. Like we might not ever do anything with these, but I don't know. I think that kind of also was in hindsight, definitely not in the moment. In hindsight, I think yeah. that was definitely kind of a cool, a cool thing to yeah. be able to like being forced to like look at creating music a little differently and in a different headspace than usual. Yeah, you know. Yeah. In hindsight. Yeah. So, in hindsight. <laughs> yeah. So because you were kind of going through this headspace of, well, we might just be putting this or just making this basically for us because we may never be able to play it. We may not mm-hmm. even just put it out. Did that give you more creative freedom of, you know what, let's try that weird thing that we've never done on this because it might just be for us? Yeah. 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 Definitely. I think a lot of a lot of freedom just in general, even with lyrics, it was like I'm just gonna write down whatever i'm thinking instead mm-hmm. of like trying to put together some big poetic masterpiece or something you know yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the structured poem <laughs> like, yeah yeah um 
So how do you recommend your fans to listen to this album for the first time? Should they do it in the car with friends, in the dark with headphones on, is it a workout album, party album? What do you personally recommend? Oh, driving in the car with the windows down. Okay. I was just about to say the same thing. Nice sunny day. Yep, nice day. Windows down, put that shit on. Blare it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And start at the top of the record. Yeah. Start with Sleepyhead. Oh, yeah. Start with, start yeah. It is it is Sleepyhead, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this one should be super, super quick, off the top of your heads. I want you guys to describe this album for new listeners in three words. Three words each, no more, no less. Six total. To be quick. Uh, yeah, <laughs> both um, went dead silent. I don't know. I think it's it's fun. Mm-hmm. It's cohesive and adventurous. There, there you go. go. Damn right. <laughs> nice. Um, I'll go with six, same three. <laughs> <laughs> Just say, Funko, soon adventurous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, honest, heavy, mm-hmm. and awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah! <All> right. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, in that same train of thought, is there a certain feeling or emotion you want to to have while going through the album? Oh no, the album's kind of. I feel like it's kind of like a. I mean, you use the word nostalgia, which I think is kind of a kind of a good word for it. And I I think it's kind of in that same vein as like it's kind of like a it feels like sort of a wonder. like It's full of wonder in a weird way. You know what I mean? Because yeah. there's a lot of like discussion of like what you do with your dreams and your ambitions and stuff like that and the uncertainty of it all. And I think that there's a wonder about that that is exciting, you know? Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of the songs like sound like sound upbeat and and fun and catchy and stuff even though the the message is a little melancholy maybe mm-hmm. so yeah it's interesting <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, so can you guys talk about any particularly challenging or standout moments from the creation of the album positive or negative um I mean, I think we've had this problem with almost every record is that we haven't really, even though we had all this COVID time, once we actually decided what was going to be the record, it kind of felt like not as much as the last record, which I wasn't as around much for, but kind of a, not like a sprint, but kind of like you got to get to the finish line and you run out of time to like do all the things you want to do. Like, I know him and I talk about this a lot. Like if we had like, two three months to just do nothing besides like put songs and try things in the studio i think that that would have made it a little less challenging sometimes in the head because like you you i could nitpick the shit out of it yeah Yeah. like it's it's never i mean i've always said like songs are really never done until you like they are done once you put them out but like i think in your head as the person who helped create them they were never actually they're never actually finished because you're always kind of like well I could have done this cool thing there. That would have made it cool. I know they're done when I hate myself and I never want to hear them again. <laughs> oh, there you go. I always, I always said I was, I was done with the song when I stopped thinking about it all the time. Yeah. Like, because, yeah, sometimes you're, when you're in the middle of working on a song, you'll just wake up and it's just fucking, mm-hmm. you know, bitching at you, being like, hey, when are you going to finish me? Yeah. When are you going to finish me? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for this question, I want you to picture you're on tour, you're at a gas station for a rest stop. What is your snack of choice? Definitely some kind of like spicy chip. Yeah. Yeah. Like a Taki or like, um, one of my favorite things about being in Texas, which is where we are right now is, uh, what did you say? Beef sticks. Beef sticks. Yeah. Beef (laughs) sticks. A good one. (laughs) Um, especially not being on Texas, there's so much like spicy chili like mangoes like all there's like whole walls of snacks that are just like chili lime flavored and i'm like yep. fuck yeah let's go <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> <It's> fucking best <laughs> what about you um dip and dots I put, anytime there's anytime there's dip and dots i have to get them even yeah i'm like i am so not hungry but i gotta get those <laughs> i gotta get i that. gotta get them <laughs> perfect right. uh, so on the Although, topic of food to be honest oh. our gas station halls are pretty wild sometimes we'll come out with like two bags each 
I got oh. candy and I got chips. I got alcohol. <laughs> you got it all. You covered exactly. the gamut. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love that. Uh, so on the topic of food, if the band was a dish, what dish would the band be and why? Oh, shit. Either barbecue or pho. <laughs> pho is good. No, not actually, though. That's just what we like oh. to eat. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we were, yes, maybe we'd be like a... Maybe some kind of like gumbo. Ooh, cosmic gumbo. Cosmic yeah. gumbo. <laughs> a gumbo is a good one because there's a lot of a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, in there. Just, we're like an indie rock band with like some pop aspects, but also like a lot like heavier live and and stuff. So it's like. We had a guy tell us the other night that we told him we were indie rock, and he was like, "Ah, you got more balls than that." <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "Maybe indie rock with balls." And I was like, "We got to put that in our bio." That, that's that, that's a bio. That's a, that's a bio. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> that's great. So, um, <laughs> so, so uh, for the last couple of questions, we're going to shift completely away from music and go straight to death row. Boom. So, if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? I'd probably do like a really good, like thick, like thick steak, mm-hmm. some asparagus, and some like mashed potatoes. But like the kind of mashed potatoes where they, there's still like a little bit of it's like the red mashed potatoes, like a little bit oh, of yeah. steam left in it. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. And like real buttery, maybe like a nice red wine reduction sauce with it. I want to say something spicy, but. I don't know. I don't want to go out with my stomach hurting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be miserable. Or he can do the opposite. Daniel Tosh says, fine, make it a burrito. You're going to clean some shit up. <laughs> <laughs> it's burrito pack jalapenos. <laughs> hot sauce. Mine would be Thanksgiving. Mm. Oh. I love Thanksgiving. Right. Like stuffing? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I'll just go to the grocery and I'll just get a box of stuffing yeah. and a jar of gravy yes. and I'll just make it and eat it by myself. Yeah, that's <laughs> fair. Yeah. That's fair. So good. It's delicious. <laughs> uh, so if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? I'd probably live on Naboo in Star Wars. Oh, Naboo. Isn't that, that's the one Luke was raised on, right? No, uh, no, that's Tatooine. Um, Tatooine, fuck, sorry. Oh, I look, Padme, I look, I look, Padme's I'm... from Naboo. It's like the the beautiful, and then it gets blown up later. But Damn. so before, so before that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, because I was worried. I, I was getting them confused because I was like, bro, you'd want to live on like a fucking desert planet? <laughs> that's so boring. <laughs> All the, the vaguely anti-Semitic shit going on on Tatooine yeah. in the first episode. Oh, it's insane. <laughs> Um, I remember this game that I used to play when I was a kid on Nintendo 64. It was called Banjo and Kazooie. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> I just remember being like, man, that world is beautiful. I, I want to go there. there. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Haven't heard that in a while. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so I have the honor of asking the last question, and every single person that we've spoken to has said that it is the most important question. What's your favorite color? Controversial one, the black. If black counts as a color, which people say it doesn't, and I say that's bullshit because I can see it and it counts to me. <laughs> I can't argue with that. I think I like a good sage green. Mm. All right. Nice. Right there. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Just like the hat. There, it is. there you go. Um, so as You're I right. said, that's the most important question. Yeah. Thank you. I agree. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so as I said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you guys would like to plug? Not officially, but we will yeah. be on the road later this year. In July. We haven't mm-hmm. announced it yet, but I think we're going to really soon. So we're just going to say it. we got a headline tour in July. And tickets are going to be on sale real soon. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much done. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, doing supporting the album a little more, playing some more off the record. Um, the tour we were just on was a little weird. You can't tell he's his voice is a little scratchy and it's been sick for a few weeks and yeah so we had to kind of edit our set down to be something that halfway doable didn't kill him yeah. you know mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh I'm, the headliner will definitely be a lot more of presenting the record yeah i think the way that we've want to yeah we we'll probably think about most of it yeah mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. that's awesome 
All right. Uh, well, thank you for Sans Guys, Ben Harbor, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast.